grief, grief. The cries of the people sound among their painful struggles and we add our own cries. Grief, grief. The Christ, the one who bleeds, whose life is poured out, joins the grieving in godly vulnerability. And we touch the wounds of this Christ, born of our own frailty, and we will stay here for this time. Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Good Friday before we have our time of confession just to say that later on around lunchtime I'll be uploading a Good Friday reflection and there will be morning prayer tomorrow for Easter Saturday. We come to our time of confession. Let us pray. O oh God, our own lives carry the wounding of life. We are bowed down by things which seem too much for some, while others seem to go free. We grieve for our losses in illness and death, in separation and alienation from each other. We reel under hard choices and the dreadful burden of our mistakes. We sadly see where we have been on this journey and we long for a new way before us. Who will understand this, our life? Who will comfort and forgive us? Three days of waiting, three times of waiting, three thousand thousand years of waiting for an end to the grieving of the people. Hear the words of assurance. See, touch the wounded hands. Put your hand in the bleeding side of Christ. This, our God, lives within our grieving and even our dying. Come, place all your grieving alongside the heart of Christ. Christ, have mercy. Our Bible reading today is taken from John chapter 18, beginning at verse 18. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. They asked him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment the cock crowed. Events quickly overtake the intimacy of the Last Supper with its hope-filled message. Stepping out into the night, Judas consorts with those who would arrest Jesus. And then here we have Peter left alone, subject to accusations that he's one of Jesus's disciples. And despite his protestations earlier, Peter denies Christ. It doesn't mention that in John's Gospel, but in the other three Gospels, we're told that Jesus looks at Peter at that point and Peter wept. What look would be in Jesus's eyes at that point? Would it be a look of disappointment or rebuke or a look that conveyed that sense of betrayal he must have felt? But everything about the passion narrative indicates it was probably a look of love. Elsewhere, chapter 6 of John, Jesus says, He came into the world not to do my own will, but the will of one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should lose nothing at all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. Jesus would lose not a single one he was given, not a single one of them and not a single one of us, despite how we might mess up, how we might fail him, how we might betray him. Jesus will not lose a single 
one of us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Heavenly Father, try as we may to live faithful lives. We're confronted with how often we fall short of our own expectations of ourselves. We lift to you today, this morning, those failings that weigh us down, those failings which bring us guilt or remorse. those minor everyday failings that we've just become used to. Dear God, despite our failings, help us to cling to that truth, that in Christ your love is shown to be unshakable, dependable and unconditional, and that not one of us is lost or beyond that love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray today for all who are working in such self-sacrificial circumstances to protect us and heal people from this virus. We pray for all NHS workers, for health and social care workers, for backroom staff, for all the supply chain people. We continue to pray for the government and for our Prime Minister. And we pray for all those we know who are unwell. And in a moment of quiet, we lift them to God in our hearts. Heavenly Father, we lift to you those we have named and we pray too for David and his family, for Christine and Bill. And we pray for Janet and for Dot. Heavenly Father, we pray for peace, comfort and healing for all those we have named and those known only to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray too for all who are dying, for all those who mourn, and for those who have recently died. And this morning we pray especially for Edna's brother-in-law, Les, Heavenly Father, we pray with that hope that when we cling to Christ, the love of God is shown to be unshakable, dependable, unconditional and eternal. Hear our prayers this morning and bring us peace and hope, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And we pray the collect for Good Friday. Almighty Father, look with mercy on this, your family, 
for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who is alive and glorified with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ crucified, draw you to himself to find in him a sure basis for faith, a sure ground for hope and the assurance of sins forgiven and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>